Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, I'm Adam Durth. Uh, I work with Sustainable Engineering, and we're going to be talking about the, uh, the REAP grant program today. So Sustainable Engineering provides free technical assistance to rural businesses and agricultural producers applying for the USDA Rural Energy for America program grants, or REAP for short. Uh, the REAP grant provides up to 50% uh, project funding um, to projects helping rural businesses and agricultural producers to use less energy, uh, produce less waste, and uh, produce their own energy through energy efficiency, biofuel, and renewable energy technologies. Ultimately, the goal is to save those businesses money. All right. Um, so we're going to go over some eligibility requirements for the program. Um, so eligible borrowers include rural small businesses. Um, businesses must be located in rural areas with populations less than 50,000 um, people. And then ag agricultural producers. Um, agricultural producers can be located in rural or non-rural areas uh, as long as 50% of their gross income comes from uh, agricultural production. Uh, eligible borrowers for the REAP grant can uh, receive our services free of charge. Uh, we validate that your business address falls in a qualified area for the REAP grant uh, application. Um, so let's show some examples of who and who does not qualify for the REAP grant um, by using the USDA uh, eligibility mapping tool. All right. <clears throat> so I am going to use our business address for an example. And we are located in Las Cruces. All right, so we show our business address. We would, we are a small business, but since we are located in the um, Las Cruces metro area, we do not qualify for the REAP grant um, because the population of that area is greater than 50,000 people. But let's say we started growing algae and while offering our services uh, that we currently offer, we generate 60% of our revenue from sales of algae for whatever purpose, uh, fuel, food, uh, pharmaceuticals, et cetera. Um, we can apply for the REAP grant so I just wanted to show agricultural producers can be anywhere in the state um, as long as they have that 50% um, income coming from agricultural production. So let's, um, let's do one more example. Uh, I myself like to uh, make home craft brews. Um, so let's say in the future, I want to go in business doing that and, and maybe, uh, maybe start a hop farm. And let's, uh, let's look at the northern part of the state because uh, maybe the climate's a little more forgiving uh, for growing hops than in the, the squeltering south. Um, so let's put in a, maybe a potential address and see, see what we get. All right, so maybe I wanna do that in, in Jimenez Springs. And that does qualify for the REAP grant um, for small business and once again, agricultural producers. Um, so I wanted to point out, here's the Santa Fe metro area and it's orange. So if a small business res resided there, they wouldn't qualify. And the same for, you can start seeing it down here. Here's Albuquerque Metro. I do believe there's a hop farm potentially uh, around the Santa Fe metro area. So, uh, they would be eligible even though they're in the the, uh, the metro area, as long as 50% of their income comes from um, actually like, you know, producing hops and then selling them. Um, 
All right, so you found out you're eligible for the REAP grant based on uh, the location of your business. What's next? Uh, well, to receive a government grant, you must provide the government with a small amount of information uh, to confirm your business is indeed eligible to receive uh, the specific grant you're applying for. Um, you really just need to gather four pieces of information and enter it into SAM.gov to receive your unique entity ID. Um, so those four basic pieces of information would include your legal business name, uh, your legal business address, uh, start year of your business, and then state of incorporation. So I think everybody here would be New Mexico. So it's really important and it's really easy to do at the same time. So we're just going to watch a, a little five or six minute video just explains and shows how, how easy it is and the steps involved. Welcome to this walkthrough of getting a unique entity ID in SAM.gov. This video will show you how to get your unique entity identifier without completing an entity registration. The unique entity ID is a 12 character alphanumeric value assigned, managed, and owned by the federal government. SAM.gov is the system that assigns it. When you request a unique entity ID, your organization's legal business name and address will be validated. Validation is a verification that your organization is what you say it is. SAM.gov uses an Entity Validation Service, or EVS, to independently verify the existence and uniqueness of an entity. What's the difference between only getting a unique entity ID and registering your entity? An entity registration allows your organization the opportunity to receive a contract or assistance directly from the federal government, not from another contractor or awardee. You must register your entity in SAM.gov when you want to bid on federal contracts as a prime contractor or seek a federal assistance as a prime awardee. Entity registrations include getting the unique entity ID and require assertions, representations and certifications, and other information about your business. Some organizations that do business with the federal government, such as subawardees, do not directly bid on contracts or apply for assistance and may not need to complete an entity registration. There may be other situations where a federal agency directs you to get a unique entity ID or to register in SAM.gov. Let's walk you through the steps to request a unique entity ID. Before we begin, make sure that you can officially document your entity's legal business name, physical address, start year or year of incorporation, state of incorporation, and your national identifier if your entity is based outside of the United States. You also need to set up a SAM.gov user account. Select sign in from the upper right corner of the SAM.gov homepage and accept the government terms. Login.gov manages usernames and passwords for SAM.gov. If you already have a Login.gov account, you can connect your SAM.gov account to it by signing in here. If you do not have a Login.gov account, select Create an Account and follow the directions. When you sign in from the SAM.gov homepage, you will be navigated to your workspace. On the Entities widget, select the Get Started button to begin your request for Unique Entity ID. You will see a welcome screen. You will answer two questions about your goal and who asked you to come to SAM.gov. SAM.gov will then recommend a registration option based on the answers you've provided. Enter your legal business name and your organization's physical address. SAM.gov will search the EVS database for your information.
confirm that you can provide entity documentation if it is required. Before you get started, you can review a list of the acceptable documentation from this list. If the database locates your entity or similar entities that could be yours, you will see the Review Entity Information page. If you see an entity in the list that you recognize as yours, select the I recognize my entity option. Select the entity in the list and then select Next. On this page, confirm if all the information on this entity that you have selected is correct. If it is correct, select Yes and then Next. If some details are incorrect, such as your entity name is missing, the LLC, or it has your old address, or it's missing your suite number, we will walk you through how to update it later in this video. Next, enter your entity start year and state of incorporation. Entities based outside of the United States may be asked for a national identifier here. Now that you have confirmed your information, you can select Receive Unique Entity ID to be assigned your unique entity ID. You will have the option here to restrict the public search of your information. If you uncheck this box, only you and federal government users will be able to search and view your entity information. You must also check the box certifying that you are authorized to conduct transactions for this entity. Select Receive Unique Entity ID. Congratulations! You have gotten your unique entity ID. SAM.gov will send you an email confirmation with the unique entity ID in it. All right. So that's uh, the steps for doing that. And we can certainly help you um, along the way to uh, getting that unique uh, entity ID from sam.gov. All right, so the uh, application process is probably the most difficult process, but totally manageable. And we will fill out the majority of the application for you. However, we don't have access to all the information needed to complete the forms um, listed over here on the slide. Um, so we will rely on you to find and provide some critical pieces of information throughout the process. Your application will be scored based on many factors, including if uh, this is your first REAP application, uh, energy savings from the project, return on investment, uh, and financial commitment of funds, and, and a few more. Um, so some of the actual application forms we have to fill out uh, consist of a few sections of the RD4280 and the SF424 forms. I'm not gonna go too far in depth, but it's just uh, stuff we have to fill out and we will fill out the majority of it, but there might be a couple you know, items that we'll, we'll ask you to go find if we, if we can't find it or we don't have access to it. Um, We'll also do uh, audit and technical reports. Um, that's something we have to submit to, to the government for the application process for them to review and, and grade the merit of the project on. Um, and then environmental reports, uh, we'll do that. Uh, vendor estimate and justification, um, we'll do that uh, with the client you jointly. Um, it's always, uh, nice to collaborate with, um, you know, clients in a local area if they already work with certain contractors um, for installing equipment or whatnot, and we can go through that avenue. Um, financial commitment of funds will be on you, the client, and then the final review and just signatures of the application will be on you, the client. Um, I'm going to come back, uh, talk a little bit more about the financial commitment of funds. Uh, financial commitment of funds is not required but you can score 15 points for showing uh, financial commitment. And um, the scoring, I think it's based on a hundred point scale. I think there might be some bonus criterias, um, but, but yeah, it shows you how, you know, 
potentially how many points you can earn. Um, <clears throat> so there are many ways to show you have funds available committed to the project, such as a loan approval statement or a bank statement showing your account has adequate funds to cover the project costs. Um, the USDA will work with you. So there's likely other avenues uh, to show proof of financial commitment of funds. All right, so we're gonna go over uh, our process now and what our services to you entail. Uh, if we go ahead and look at the image on the, uh, the bottom left-hand corner here, um, yeah, you'll see our, our general project management tool uh, we use to, to keep us on track. Much of the information uh, we are going to go over today will be included in the preliminary project assessment and REAP introduction uh, and process task. Um, in addition to those items, we uh, will request your utility data to get a high level understanding on how much energy you're using uh, and thus the potential cost savings you can expect. We will then schedule a site visit. Depending on the size of the um, facility or of your operation, this could take between one to two days or potentially even a half a day. Um, during the site visit, we will gather as much data as possible. Um, so both qualitative, um, which would include interviews with building occupants, uh, managers uh, about their habits and any problems with comfort or equipment. Um, and then a uh, quantitative, which would uh, include um, logging data such as like electrical usage on a motor um, or getting temperatures um, of, of different equipments or building measurements, which would include the, the construction of the, uh, the facility itself, whether it be doors or windows or uh, just the makeup of uh, building materials. So all this will include uh, interviews with on-site personnel and using equipment to log energy consumption data, as I, as I just mentioned. After the site visit, we will use the data uh, we acquired to conduct an environmental analysis, um, generate a technical report, uh, and then complete the REAP grant application uh, for either renewable energy or energy efficiency projects. Uh, or both, and, and we'll determine uh, which are the most feasible for your facility or operation. So we will help you with uh, project planning and coordinating uh, with local contractors to install the technologies you're seeking REAP funding for. So let's review a couple uh, couple projects we have done in, done in the past and uh, the type of clients we are working with. Um, we continue to work with new businesses and organizations. Uh, we've worked with a large tile manufacturer uh, and a bronze sculpture artist. And we're about to start a project involving protein production from animal and plant byproducts. Uh, we're also about to start a project with um, a pecan farmer and a processing facility and same with a pistachio a farmer and processing facility, um, and uh, another one with a, a cattle rancher as well. Um, so we recently worked on a project with a pecan farmer um, to make their processing facility more energy efficient and comfortable uh, for their employees. We created a, a building energy model for their facility that showed how different energy technologies save energy and improve occupant comfort. Um, so right here is kind of our building energy model, uh, just us building the facility. And here's some, some data just showing if, uh, with wall insulation and ventilation fans, how, how the temperature in the building, uh, becomes more manageable from peaking out at 90 degrees down to closer to 70, 74, 75. Uh, so these guys, um, they applied, um, for the REAP Energy, um, Energy Efficiency Improvement uh, Grant, EEI. And the technologies uh, that they applied for include uh, wall insulation, ventilation fans, uh, cold storage refrigeration, uh, LED lighting upgrades. And you can see their building wasn't 
and too large, but you can see the savings uh, down at the bottom here, uh, both financial and just energy savings. All right, um, so we are currently working uh, on this project uh, that involves reducing energy consumption of uh, current equipment while sizing a PV solar system for a future expansion. Um, on a side note, uh, if you're expecting to expand your operations in the future, we can help you with that, but there are limits to what the REAP grant will pay for. Um, this especially goes for uh, energy efficiency projects, but in general, the grant is not going to pay you to consume more energy or electricity. It is uh, incentivizing to, to use less energy. Um, the freeze drying process uh, is new to us and it's been fun to learn about. Um, these freeze dryers produce an enormous amount of waste heat uh, and it's been interesting to determine what, uh, what to do with the heat with a new HVAC systems to save energy while keeping the, the workers safe and comfortable. Um, so they're going for both the, uh, the REAP EEI and then the Renewable Energy uh, Systems Grant. And their technologies include a roof mount solar system um, and then going all electric with their heating, ventilation and cooling HVAC systems using heat pumps and then uh, cold storage refrigeration improvements. Um, yeah, and ongoing, so the savings are to be determined. So this financial and insur insurance provider um, uses uh, this building as uh, an auto shop in the, in the back and office space in the front. Uh, they want to make the space more energy efficient and comfortable uh, for their workers and clients uh, they plan on expanding the building occupancy in the future and want to know how large a solar PV system they would need to offset their future energy use. Uh, we conduct an energy audit for them, create a building energy model, and then use the data from the, the building energy model to design a solar PV system that eliminate 90% of their utility bill. Uh, this project is an excellent example of uh, prioritizing energy efficiency before installing a a solar PV system, as using less energy allows one to, to pay uh, and install a smaller PV system. Um, so you can see here's right here is uh, the the uh, solar system that we designed, and then the the monthly energy consumption, or sorry, monthly energy production from the system. Um, so. These guys are both going for the, the energy efficiency and renewable energy grant. And um, as I mentioned, they're going for uh, technologies to use in their solar PV, um, using smart thermostats to bring the temperature down, um, down or up at night when the building's not occupied, it saves a lot of energy, uh, reflective window tinting, and then LED lighting upgrades. And we're estimating that they'll save $6,000 annually at this office. Um, and 52,000 kilowatt hours um, of consumption from the grid. All right, so uh, that is the end of my presentation. Here's some information, our website, uh, information on the REAP grant process, and I have no problem with these slides being shared, and, and please do contact uh, the New Mexico Department of Agriculture. They can always point you in the right direction to us. Here's our contact information. Uh, one last thing I wanted to, to show you, uh, just our project assessment form real quick. Um, so this is just, uh, we asked everybody who's interested in the REAP grant to fill this out. It's pretty basic stuff, uh, just your contact information. Um, you know, if you're a rural small business or agricultural producer, uh, if, you, if you already know you're interested in a couple technologies, there's a drop down menu um, that you can select from and the type as well. And so in this, you know, estimated project costs, any inf information you have is good, but uh, not, not too necessary on the bottom ones. Uh, we can figure that out later. So um, yeah, that's, that's what I have. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to. It's a question yeah. from Miss <clears throat> Mary in the chat. Okay. Uh, do you want me to read it for you? <laughs> sure. Uh, 
<laughs> You're good. <laughs> um, if you are planning a processing facility but have not yet started construction, is REAP the wrong program? A new facility would add energy, right? Yeah, there there are options for, for new construction. Um, and what we've been working on now, we're actually working on one um, new construction, actually two, and, but we're working on it with solar. I do think there are other avenues um, to go through to potentially get uh, to get funding for for new facilities. Um, I can ask one of our clients maybe some of the items there or some of the funding opportunities they've gone through um, and, and get back to you on that one. But but the REAP overall, at least for the energy efficiency, is the goal is to kind of like look at outdated equipment. It could be a new facility, actually. You're correct. But if you're looking to double your capacity, the REAP might not be the best avenue for you. If you're looking for a new facility where you're going to move your equipment over, some of it over, and then you're looking to get new equipment that's more efficient, then yes, we can show that your production just shifted buildings and you really want to get this more efficient equipment that could save you, you know, 30, 40 percent, whatever it is compared to your original operation. Um, so it can apply for new facilities. Um, but but I think the backdrop has to be you're, you're, you've already been in business and you're, you're looking to show um, you're looking to show that you're going to save some energy. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question directly or if that was good enough. Well, <laughs> we, we've been in business for a couple of years now, but it's a brand new orchard. So the trees haven't really started production. And then last year we added a greenhouse, but we haven't yet brought the heating and cooling to the greenhouse. So so right now we just open the sides when we need it cool. <laughs> uh, okay. we've, we've been looking at putting solar on the greenhouse and we're going to need some kind of a facility for cold storage and also sales, retail sales and that kind of okay. thing. Apple. Yeah, I think I think I've talked to you a little more, but when you're talking about like a new build for the retail, um, potentially bring in still cold storage if you don't have it, uh, the REAP is probably not going to be the best program for you. Okay. Um, because we have to show, we have to basically look at your current utility bills, and then and for whatever upgrades, show that we're gonna we're gonna do some savings. Um, so if you certainly have an operation going now, and you're looking to improve on some of those aspects, I mean, we can we can look at that. Um, but probably the new build projects themselves, if they're to stand alone or even just adding cold storage, you don't have it. That's not going to be, that's not going to be in the uh, wheelhouse of the REAP grant. Um, Mary, uh, Adam said he would look into it, but we'll also look into it. Um, there may be options through either LIDA um, or the rural, there's other rural development programs through USDA um, that may be more applicable to those. Um, I will send those to you, the email that you registered to attend. Okay. And I guess if this one's not it, then I should probably close out here. <laughs> but I well, do appreciate looking at some more information. Yeah, we appreciate you attending. Thank you so much. Thank you guys.